Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're talking about why you should switch to the studio version of the drivers if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. In case you weren't aware, NVIDIA offers two flavors of their video drivers. They have a studio driver and a game ready driver. The studio driver has optimizations for creative workflows and the game ready driver has frequent hotfixes which get new game uh, content, DLSS, and other data included. Today we're looking at why it's time to switch to the Studio Driver. You can see here on the left, Studio Driver details learn what's new. Where it gets exciting for me is right here, Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve Studio 16 Exit Beta, and that now makes use of NVIDIA AI libraries and the tensor cores found in the RTX GPUs. That means on my 2080 Ti, I should see acceleration of speed warp, super scale, auto color, facial recognition, and the stylized work. So let's take a look at each of those and see if it truly has fired up faster. Some of you smart folks are about to jump out of your seat because I haven't mentioned what's truly the biggest feature of the studio drivers. In the consumer level, RTX, GTX, uh, both Pascal and Turing, the most two recent versions of NVIDIA's GPU architecture, uh, the studio version opens up 10-bit color. This is something that was previously released only in their Quadro graphics cards, which carry quite a price tag. This is a big difference. However, not many of us have, especially if we've got consumer-grade graphics cards, not many of us have a true 10-bit panel. We have uh, the 8 plus 2 DRC, which, which isn't a 100% true color ac accurate representation of 10-bit color. At any rate, the features we're testing today are going to be the RTX features that come out of the neural engine. Let's see what they do. The first feature NVIDIA calls out in their studio driver update for Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve is Speed Warp. Speed warp is the optical flow retiming of the footage. Here, without speed warp turned on, I can play through the footage and you notice it's relatively smooth. However, if I slow this down to say 50% speed, as it plays through, you notice the micro stutters in between the windmill blades as they move from frame to frame. That's because there just isn't enough data there for the windmill to show a smooth motion. My options, however, include using the retiming. In this case, it'll leverage RTX and the new NVIDIA graphics card architecture for the tensor cores to use optical flow in the retime process. This is a studio only feature. And then use speed warp. This does motion estimation and blurs or create data that would go in between this. So now, we can see it's going to be a slower process. Wow. That was really quick. Let's play through that one more time. That is sped up dramatically. I guess uh, Blackmagic switching over to the... Now you can see it's pre-cached a little bit there, and now it's slowing down. Still... This is much faster than it was when the feature originally came out as part of the Neural Engine in 16. Just it feels like it. As you can see, it's much smoother playback in the part that's been rendered and cached here. This smoother playback is quite amazing when you consider how jittery it was and now how smooth this plays through. So that's one thing that's been enabled by the studio drivers and optimizations. The next feature NVIDIA mentions relative to DaVinci Resolve is Superscale. Superscale is the ability to take lower resolution footage and scale it to where it appears to be a higher resolution. In this case, I'm using a clip I've recorded at 1080p. I right click on that in my media pool and go to clip attributes. Here, I'm able to see at the bottom of the video clip attributes, Superscale. I'm gonna use 4X scaling for fun. And then sharpness, medium, noise reduction, medium. And I'm going to let that uh, work itself out here. Let's see. So you see a bit more sharpness around each of these icons, which could make a big difference if you were displaying this on a large screen. 
It's cleaned up a lot of the noise that was around them, and it's, I'd say, noticeably sharper than it was when I first encountered it. I love how fast these features are working. Next is Auto Color and Shot Match. For that, I jump to the Color tab. And now you can see here's some footage I've already colored. So I'm going to take that color grade out. It, it was shot in a log type format, not entirely, but a flat color profile. All right. And I'm going to add a serial node by hitting Alt S. There we go. Got one node in here. And in the bottom left, you can see this little A that is auto balance. That automatically colors your footage. And I hit it. And there we go. Automatically colored. Really not bad. I'd like to pull more detail out of this. You'll see a video on auto color tagged above. So that worked pretty quickly. Um, and then finally, you've got shot match, which allows you to take any footage and shot match to this clip. So in this case, I'm going to come here. I'm going to, why do I have to redo that one? There we go. We'll reset this color grade here. And now I'm going to right click and shot match to this clip, which does not do a grade copy. It actually looks at the highs, the lows, the color tones, and then tries to recreate that here. You can see it did a pretty dark uh, view of it here. Maybe it was a good way to get a good start at it, but I'd have to do some work to this to get it back usable. Maybe a little less saturation. Looks like it kicked that up somewhere in there. Anyway, um, too much. So to make it usable, you might have to do a little tweaking to it, but that gives you the general color, tone, and luminance that you've got in the shot that you match against. Could be really useful in similar footage that looks to have a different tone in it. You can see that I've got more of a yellow orangey hue here and over here I've got more of a just cooler, less color. So if I were to take this footage and right click shot match to this clip, you can see it added more contrast to match the deeper darks in this footage and it added more color in there trying to get more of that orange out of the sun. For this next feature, I've created a bin with a bunch of shots of my face in it. I right click and choose Analyze Clips, and this processes each of these clips looking for faces so that it can group them into singular bins and provide you a search context later because you're able to name all of the people in it. This would be really helpful if you were searching for scenes and footage that included certain folks. You'd be able to run this and then search for those people individually. This does still run about the same it did previously. There we go. So obviously didn't find anybody but me, but you can see it's identified in every one of those distinct clips that there's a person in here. And there are well, one it thinks could be somebody else. This uses a convolutional neural network across the RTX cores and seems to have done an okay job. The final feature NVIDIA calls out in their studio-only driver is Stylize. As I come into my color tab, use the OpenFX library, I can see that they've got many different colors, wow, many different choices here of stylization that I could use. Remember, this is that footage of the the crag coming up next to the mountain, lake, <laughs> weird. And it's amazing how fast this stuff switches. Just any of these options can be flipped to. I bet even while it's running, yep. Really, really awesome. I don't know where you'd use these. If there's any, that might be a nice transition piece, actually. Um, in between the two. So that's a fantastic uh, new addition. If you're looking for a stylistic type film and you've got a feature or a look you really want to go for, this could be an easy way for you to achieve that look. 
That's a demo of all the features that the Studio Driver leverages RTX to optimize. I'm interested to see how much further DaVinci Resolve Blackmagic Design takes this inside NVIDIA's RTX features. Uh, one of the challenges for a developer would be that they are starting to optimize towards specific hardware. Doing that may alienate portions of the use group and those that have non-RTX or non-NVIDIA hardware. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet. I'm pretty thrilled. I'm getting really close to a thousand subscribers, which means YouTube starts to pay me. Uh, I think in cents, not in dollars. But hey, it's exciting to get paid for the work. So please uh, subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.